Hi guys, hope you doing well. Day 28 of the Aurora AKT 30 day challenge. We're super close to the exam now. Once again, hopefully your confidence levels are sky high. Hopefully you're pushing through all the doubts, the barriers, the fears, the anxieties, the tensions, and all that other energy that might be eating you up at the moment in the build up to the AKT. So hopefully you can keep focused on that tunnel vision of trying to maximize the remaining hours that you have to try and maximize your score on the real day itself. Now we're back to stats today. So another stats question, let's get you um, back into that stats zone. So 57 seconds as always, have a good read of the question, a clear read of the answers, um, trying to let lots of clutter get in the way um, and try and zone in on what you think is the right answer. So let's start 57 seconds, off you go. Your time 57 seconds so once again when we're doing our stats questions we have done a few graphs and a few calculations but we've tried to look at those other areas that people often don't focus on as well so this is all about bias hopefully it's something that you've come across people often get confused things like bias and confounding and these kind of things so um let's focus on bias you're reviewing an epidemiological study and i check in to see if there's any likely bias that may have affected outcomes and results, which of the below bias definitions is most incorrect. So remember the first thing here is most incorrect. So try and change that word from uh, a double word to a single. So basically which of them is false, which is incorrect. And the only one that doesn't quite work or doesn't quite fit is E. Selection bias is not reduced by triangulation. We'll go through these biases in a second and talk about how you can reduce them. Triangulation is when you basically look at a certain thing from three different angles. So you're increasing the, the effectiveness of trying to work out an answer or a solution or a pattern. Um, so it's nothing to do, so it's a good thing to do, of course, but it's nothing to do with reducing selection bias. All the others are correct. Publication bias is assessed using final plots. We'll talk about it in a second. Recall bias is impacted by past negative experiences. Observer bias is protected against by double blinding. And sampling bias is when you base overall results on a sample that may be too small. So E is the answer. What is bias then? I'm um, just trying to shift this out of the way so you can have a, a good read. So a systematic error that can over or underestimate parameters or results. So say, for example, you are conducting a trial or a study. Um, if there are lots and lots of biases in there, then you're either going to over or underestimate the results, i.e. your study is not going to be as high a value as if you've eliminated as much as possible. You can't always eliminate all bias uh, so being aware of potential biases and having things in place to try and reduce them in the first place. So bias can be introduced um, at a variety of stages within a study. So it could be right as, as far back as the design, how the study designed in the first place, how the data is collected. So, for example, I use in questionnaires, interviewing people, what kind of biases might be involved. Um, and then also analyzing the data as well and making sure that things aren't looked at in a certain or, or are looked at in a certain way um, as much as possible to reduce the impact of bias. So there are so many different types of bias, of course. Um, but these are some of the ones that are uh, influencing this particular question. So observer bias. Observers. So people are, who are observing studies and results, for example, or watching things happen in a study, make subjective decisions about research outcomes. So um, say, for example, you, get, you have people who are assessing a study and they read some data, but 
they don't use objective evidence. They they subjectively make decisions about outcomes, um, and therefore it's based on observer bias. So um, the reason that double blinding helps um, is that so say you're designing a study or you're carrying out a study, if you don't know who's in gone into which batch, for example, or say you've got placebo versus drug, and say you know which patients have gone into which batch, then maybe you're going to make subjective decisions based on that knowledge. So whereas you, if you start to double blind, then you don't know which patient has gone in which. So it reduces the impact of bias coming from the observer of the outcome or the study, or if you're uh, watching patients or the, you know, looking at their reactions or anything like that, you take away that instance. That's observer bias. Selection bias. Pre-selecting certain types of patients for each group can influence the results. So say, for example, you've got, again, a placebo group and a group with who takes the, a new drug, for example. Then if you think that, well, okay, I see a patient here that I think might benefit from the new drug, let me put them in the drug group as opposed to the placebo group, or vice versa. You think someone that, that okay, this person probably won't benefit from the drug, let's put them in the placebo group. Um you can get selection bias because you're in a way selecting in a certain way to influence the result, either consciously or subconsciously. So randomization um, will help this, not as it says here, triangulation, but randomization is helpful here because you're randomizing groups into one group versus another. Recall bias. Um, things that happen in the past can influence how study results are seen or how participants um Interaction studies. So, for example, um, if a part, let's say someone's doing an interview, uh, one of the ways of data, the way of data collection is an interview, for example, about a particular drug or side effects. Then, if you interview someone, they may talk about a health belief differently to somebody else if they remember something happening in the past. So, say for example, I don't know, there's a there's a drug about gout that's come out, and there's a there's a, there's a bit of research going on, a study going on about it. Maybe the person you're interviewing had has a, a relative who had a gout drug and had a really bad side effect. So that um, recall may well influence the way they give their answers and therefore you may introduce recall bias. So participants can base their answers on things they remember from the past. Publication bias. Um, so when study results influence whether they are published or not. So um, this can work two ways. So for example, if you get a meta-analysis or so collection of um, different trials all looked at together um, you want to make sure that there's no publication bias in the way they've selected those trials so say for example you do a um, an online search for all trials based on a new gout drug to try and put them all together to increase power of research you may only say you do an online search you may only find those uh, trials or bits of research that have been published so if you only take those and put them into a meta-analysis, then maybe you end up with publication bias because you're not, you may not be looking at trials that didn't show great results. So funnel plots, uh, we talk about this a lot in our in our um, online course. Funnel plots are designed to help reduce publication bias. So you plot everything out, you look for an inverted funnel shape, and if you get an inverted funnel shape, it means it's unlikely to have publication bias. But that's um, something that can happen when you look at things like meta-analyses. Sampling bias, um, research is based findings on a group that isn't represented of a whole population. So like we mentioned in the question here, say, for example, you do a trial, um, as it says here, really. So um, you're looking at a, dr a new drug on, I don't know, rheumatoid arthritis, trying to help rheumatoid arthritis. If the sample that you take is only of people who are 18, 19, 20 years old, and you try and use that small sample to represent the whole population, then you may end up with sampling bias because the sample that you have is not big enough, wide enough, or representative enough. Ideally, of course, you might want patients across all age groups to try and reduce sampling bias. So this is all about the sample size or type or nature. Um, and then anchoring bias. So when the first piece of information or results that you see influences the decision too much, so you either consciously or subconsciously rely on the first piece of information. So say, for example, um, I don't know, you're interviewing people um, about side effects or problems they've had with a new drug. You want, you're trying to interview a whole bunch of people to, to do a bit of study about it. If the first person comes in and starts telling you about all these really bad side effects that they had and how terrible this 
uh, drug was, then maybe that influences things going forward because that that becomes anchored. That initial reaction becomes anchored, so it may um, influence how you see the remaining interviews or hear the information and say the other way around say someone comes in and says oh it's an amazing drug no side effects really loved it really helped that might be anchored so strongly that it can influence things going forward so you rely on the first piece of information a little bit too much so i don't think that wasn't the question actually no so we just added that one in so there are loads of loads of different biases and like i said they can all they all can possibly lead you to under or overestimating certain parameters in a study or research um, which obviously reduces the the impact of it so the more biases you have the more issues you have the more difficult it is to base strong conclusions the more you've done to try and reduce bias for example double blinding randomization checking things later on um, then then you you obviously increase the the strength of that particular um, study and it has more bearing um, if someone is looking at it and reading through it and going through the results so hopefully that helps a little bit bias is something that i used to really struggle with uh, when i was praying for my akt um, but hopefully breaking the, them down in this this way can help a little bit. and hopefully you can see why option e is the only correct answer because it's the most incorrect statement here now if this is all new to you and it's all stuff that you haven't really looked at yet you've still got time to get your stats knowledge up to a certain point because stats let's face it is 10 percent. you do not want to let 10 percent go and if you've been relying on just doing lots of questions um or you've not done any stats at all and you're thinking i'll still do it then the online stats super stats course that we do uh, maybe some value it's two hours so it's short sharp it packs everything into um, a two-hour course that you can watch on screen pause rewind go back to you get a full pdf slide package if you like once you've purchased it and we cover all of these types of things that um, people often struggle with when it comes to stats the real um, getting your basics right getting your um, your base as solid as possible so you can then use that information to work out any other type of stats that comes out in the exam often what people do with stats is they will do lots and lots and lots of questions know how to answer those questions but when those questions come in a slightly different format because the base isn't there because your fundamentals aren't strong you find it hard and it appears like a really randomized question really random question so um worth going through this if you haven't got it yet if you're already using it then hopefully it helps you answer this question um, and the previous ones that we've done in the akt challenge as well and as always the coupon aurora video 10 is available to use on any akt resource including this course but any akt resource on the website just try and give you that little bit of an extra help just to get you as close as you can to being as fully prepared as you can for the big day itself hope this has been some value guys um, once again thank you for all the feedback that's coming back for all of these um, daily videos I'm really glad that they're helping we'll see you tomorrow once again for another clinical uh, question hashtag campus will pass hashtag I went with Aurora take care